Hello, friends. This is the ProLine Energy Paddle from Pickleball Apes. It's currently the only paddle on the market featuring a hybrid carbon fiber Kevlar surface, which has left some of us asking if Kevlar will be the new carbon fiber for paddle surfacing. And spoiler alert, I really like this paddle. So let's dive in and see what makes this paddle so good. The ProLine Energy costs $150, and you can knock $15 off this with the code JOHNQ. In terms of overall dimensions, the first thing that stands out about this paddle is its long, slender design. It's 17 inches long by 7 inches wide. To put this in perspective, most elongated paddles on the market, such as the Carbon 1X, are 16.5 inches long by 7.25 inches wide. So with the ProLine Energy, you're gaining half an inch in length and losing a quarter inch in width. Here's a direct comparison with the 6.0 Double Black Diamond. The ProLine Energy is 7 tenths of an inch longer and 7 tenths of an inch narrower than the 6.0 paddle. The handle length is 6.25 inches compared to 5.5 inches for most elongated paddles, which is great for two-handed shots. I still put a finger on the back of the paddle for two-handed backhands, but the extra real estate in the handle is much appreciated. Also, the neck is tapered instead of flaring out wide, which extends the usable area of the handle. So actually, the usable area measures 6.5 inches. Thickness comes in at 16.5 millimeters, which is slightly thicker than the standard 16 millimeters. They're also using a narrow cell polypropylene core, which provides higher density than the standard cell width, providing more responsiveness and power. Although the website lists the paddle weight between 8.2 and 8.4 ounces, both paddles they sent me weighed 7.8 ounces before any additions. So that's static weight. For swing weight, this paddle measures 121, which puts it in the same range as the Legacy Pro, Selkirk 005, and the Yola Solaire 14 millimeter. Swing weight is how light or heavy the paddle feels when you're actually playing with it, which varies according to where the balance point is. The classic example is that if you swing a hammer with this handle, it feels much heavier than if you flip it around with the hammerhead in your hand and then swing it. And honestly, the swing weight of the Pro Line Energy feels low compared to what you would expect with such an elongated paddle. In fact, the swing weight of this paddle is about middle of the pack for elongated paddles. It's going to feel heavier than most square paddles and heavier than extremely low swing weight varieties such as Pro Kinex and some of the Gearbox paddles. And it'll feel lighter than many of the popular paddles such as the Yola Hyperion, Diadem Warrior, and Engage Pursuit. The main selling point of this paddle is what they're calling a dynamic Kevlar surface, which the website goes on to describe as a blend of Kevlar and carbon fiber. After looking closely at the surface, it seems that what they're doing is using a twill cloth composed of carbon fiber toes interlaced with Kevlar. Then there's a raw texture placed over the top of the fabric. Zooming in under a microscope, you can see the texture over the top of the twill weave, and zooming in further, you can see the standard peel ply embossing that's used on most raw carbon fiber paddle faces. For example, it's very similar to the texture on a Carbon 1X, and even more similar to the Pro Kinex Black Ace surface. I was able to confirm with the founder of Pickleball Apes that they use a peel ply process to apply the texture very similar to what is done for raw carbon fiber paddles but they're applying the peel ply texture on top of the Kevlar carbon fiber fabric instead of on top of a unidirectional prepreg carbon fiber sheet, which is how all the raw carbon fiber paddles are doing it. So what's so special about this hybrid Kevlar carbon fiber surface? Kevlar has been used in paddles for a while now, but only within the core of the paddle. As far as I know, this is the first use of it on the paddle surface. Kevlar has some special properties that make it very tough and impact resistant. And the idea is that by combining it with carbon fiber, you combine the toughness of Kevlar together with the tensile strength of carbon fiber. Kevlar is more impact resistant than carbon fiber, which makes sense because it's used in all of our bulletproof clothing. Part of the reason it's so tough is that it's more flexible than carbon fiber. But carbon fiber has more tensile strength than Kevlar, meaning it's less likely to break under tension. So think about pulling the fabric until it rips apart. 
So hypothetically, by combining Kevlar and carbon fiber, you're increasing the overall durability of the paddle surface by making it more resistant to impact damage from a hard plastic ball, while also resisting any damage from tension as the surface layers compress and rebound the ball. I've communicated with the founder of Pickleball Apes, and he also thinks that the peel ply texture placed over the fabric will be more durable and hold its spin potential longer than the same textures applied over carbon-only surfaces. He admitted there's not enough data to say for sure, but said that his team has not noticed any significant spin loss in pedals that have been used for three to four months. He also said that the surface texture on the ProLine Energy is more durable than their raw carbon fiber entry-level paddle. All right, so what else about the technology behind this paddle? I'm sure a lot of you have already been wondering if it's thermoformed, and yes, indeed, it is. Taking off the grip, you can see the unibody design with a carbon seam extending along the perimeter down into the handle. And the owner confirmed that the paddles are created in a hot press with a unibody design infused with edge foam. So this brings all of the benefits of thermoforming, a larger sweet spot, more power and responsiveness, and better overall paddle durability. So how does this paddle actually perform? The first things I tested were its spin and power. With its raw texture, spin is definitely top tier. My spin tests came in at over 2000 RPM, placing it within the top 10 paddles that I've tested. I also tested its power by recording average serve speed with a radar gun. My method is that I serve a ball as hard as I can 10 times and then take the average speed. 56 miles per hour but the serve has to be legal in terms of how the ball is struck. So underhand it in a way that the highest point of the paddle head is below the wrist joint where it bends. The ProLine Energy is tied for first in terms of power for USAP approved paddles. Together with the 6.0 Black Diamond, their power version, this paddle averaged 55.3 miles per hour on serves. And by the way, all five paddles at the very top of this chart are EVA foam paddles and are not legal for tournament play because they're too powerful and don't pass deflection tests. Another metric I've been testing on paddles is pop. What's the difference between pop and power? Pop is how fast the ball comes off the paddle with short strokes without a full swing. So think about hand exchanges and punch volleys of the kitchen. On the other hand, power is how much velocity the paddle imparts on a ball with a fuller swing. So think about driving hard from the baseline or taking a full swing and putting the ball away at the kitchen. The way I've been testing pop is to stand at the kitchen, hold my paddle on my chest, hold the ball in my other hand with my arm extended, drop the ball, and then hit a punch volley in front of a radar gun to measure ball speed. 36 miles per hour. By holding the paddle on my chest, I'm preventing any backswing and forcing a half stroke. And by dropping the ball with an extended arm, the distance between the paddle and the ball before the swing is held constant. So the paddle is only able to travel the length of your arm before hitting the ball. For me, that distance is 28 inches or 71 centimeters. It turns out that there is not a strong linear relationship between power and pop. In other words, a paddle can have a lot of power and not much pop or vice versa, or a good amount of both or not much of either. For example, comparing these charts for serve and punch volley speed, all of the EVA foam paddles top the chart for power, but they're all just middle of the pack for pop. Also, the ProKinex Black Ace and Selkirk Power Air are in the middle of the pack for power, but they're number one and two for pop. You also get paddles that score high for both power and pop, like the Bread and Butter Filth. And there are paddles on the bottom of both lists, such as the Franklin Carbon STK and Gearbox CX-11. Okay, so where does the ProLine Energy perform for pop? For punch volley speed, the paddle averaged 34.9 miles per hour, which is well above average. It ranks number seven for pop in the 25 paddles I've tested. So overall, the ProLine Energy has excellent power and above average pop. So now that we know all of the numbers and stats, let's take a look at how everything comes together during gameplay. The first thing I noticed about this paddle is how plush it feels. It seems that the use of Kevlar in the surface cloth gives this paddle a softer feel, which makes sense because Kevlar is more flexible than carbon fiber. And what this translates to during play is better drops, dinking, and resets. Kevlar also absorbs vibrations better than carbon fiber and fiberglass. 
I can definitely notice this paddle is less jarring when hitting the ball, and it feels much more forgiving than stiffer paddles such as the Pro Kenix line and most thermoform paddles, and more similar to the plush feel of the Yola Hyperion. At the same time, this paddle is very responsive when it comes to speed ups and power shots. Power is top tier, which allows you to put the ball away when there's an opportunity and to add some speed to your serves and drives. Pop is good on this paddle too, so speed ups at the kitchen are no problem. Also, the paddle gets top tier spin. To me, this combination of great spin and power, good pop, and a plush feel is about the best combination of power and control that I've experienced in a paddle. The sweet spot on this paddle is also good, as expected for a thermoformed paddle with edge foam. The sweet spot does follow the overall dimensions of the paddle, so it's longer and more narrow than what you see on square paddles. To me, the sweet spot feels very similar to other elongated thermoformed paddles, such as the Carbon 1X, Rhombus R3, and Bread and Butter Filth. Judging a paddle's looks is always subjective, but personally, I think that this is one of the best looking paddles on the market. Not to get too woo-woo, but the overall shape and dimensions are nicely balanced. They just seem to land on the ideal proportions for my taste. I prefer an elongated look over the boxier square shapes, and the slightly rounded top is a nice touch. Also, the thicker core balances out the overall length and narrowness of the paddle. Lastly, the pedal surface has this twill weave that combines gray carbon fiber and dark red Kevlar. I mean, what else is there to say? It just looks cool. When I got this paddle, I planned to test it for a couple of weeks and then go back to my primary paddle, which was at the time the Rhombus R3 Pulsar. But I haven't put it down yet for the past month, and now it's my number one. And it's peak tournament season, so I've played with this paddle for the last three tournaments. Like I said, I'm really enjoying the unique combination of a plush feel together with great spin and power. I also like the elongated shape. Having that extra half an inch of length does make a difference. I've noticed a few times that I'm less likely to shank the ball when I'm really reaching for it. I found the extra handle length to be better for two-handed shots, but still manageable for maneuverability. I was worried that the longer handle would make the paddle more sluggish, but it's actually very well balanced so that I don't notice any loss in hand speed. No, that being said, I do want to emphasize that this shape is not for everyone. If your favorite paddle shape is square with a short handle, then this paddle is probably not for you. It's better suited for players who prefer elongated paddles and who use two-handed backhands. Here are the unknowns about this paddle. I still don't know how resistant it is to the whole issues of delamination, disbonding, and core crushing. Thermoform paddles have been more prone to these issues than traditional paddles using a cold technology. I've played a lot with this paddle for the past four weeks and there are no signs of any of these issues, but that's not long enough to know for sure. We've seen good progress over the past few months with companies addressing delamination and core corruption, and I suspect that Pickleball Apes is well aware of the issue and is taking precautions to prevent it. Also, I don't know how durable the surface texture is on this paddle. It's created with a peel ply like most raw carbon fiber paddles, but the ProLine Energy is somewhat unique in that the peel ply is placed over 3K woven cloth rather than over unidirectional prepreg fiber sheets. What this means in terms of overall durability of the texture and how long the paddle retains its spin potential is still unknown to me. As I said, the owners did tell me that they've noticed more durability on this paddle surface than their raw carbon fiber paddles, but I haven't personally had enough time with the paddle to say for sure. Lastly, I've read that Kevlar is prone to UV damage that results in a weakening of the tensile strength of the fibers. After digging into this a little deeper, I found a study that exposed Kevlar fibers to ultraviolet radiation, and they found that it does in fact damage the strength of the fibers, but it takes a lot of UV exposure. The first damage they were able to detect resulted after exposing the Kevlar to the equivalent of two years of direct sunlight for eight hours a day at mid-latitudes. So for all practical purposes, we don't really need to worry about sunlight damaging a Kevlar paddle unless it's left in direct sunlight for years. Overall, I highly recommend this paddle. It ticks all of the boxes for me. 
great feel and control, great spin, and plenty of power and pop. It also looks great, and I appreciate the innovative use of new technology. If you want to purchase this one, you can take $15 off your order using the code JOHNQ, bringing the total, including shipping, to $135. Pickleball Apes also has a generous return policy and warranty. They have a 30-day demo program where you can try out the paddle and return it anytime within 30 days for a full refund. And they also have a one-year warranty against manufacturing defects. As always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more content on paddle and gear technology. See you in the next video.